In this tutorial, we're going to look at six more amplitude and compression effects. And if you want to follow along, go get these two files here. Gettysburg 1 will be inside the Working Files Narrations folder. Instrumental Mix will be inside Music. Just too hard to find right there. Let's take a look at those effects by going Effects, Amplitude and Compression. We're going to look at Amplify, Channel Mixer, de Hard Limiter, Normalize, and Speech Volume Leveler. Normalize is a process effect that can be applied only to a clip directly. Uh, the rest of the effects can be applied in the effects rack or directly to a clip. So we'll look at the effects rack guys first. Look at amplify first here inside a mono file inside this Gettysburg address thing. If I double click on it, you'll see it just controls the volume level, makes it louder or quieter, which is exactly what this little guy does. So it's like, why bother having an uh, extra effect? And the answer is, you know, I'm not really clear why. The only little advantage that it has over using this is that here you can raise it to 48 decibels in one fell swoop. If I click apply over here, it would apply that and make it 48 decibels. If I don't use that, if I use this instead, I can only go up 15 decibel increments. Once I go up 15 once and up 15 again and 15 again, I've accomplished what Amplify can do when it's maxed out. So basically, I don't think you need to use Amplify. Let's just take a look at the stereo side of things. If you go to stereo side and open up Amplify there, you'll see that it recognizes that you're working with a stereo file and lets you control left and right channels separately. But even with left and right channels separate controls available, you can do the same thing using this controller. If you click here or you select just the left channel by using these little buttons, you can raise the volume level up just the left channel. Or if you wanted to select the right channel only, you can do the same thing there. So basically what this guy does can be done using this heads up display right there. So that's what amplifier is and I can't really recommend that you need to use it really. Now we're gonna go on to the channel mixer. Turn off amplify, go to channel mixer. Turn that on, double click it. Channel Mixer lets you adjust the volume of each channel separately, the purpose of which is perhaps to take some of the left channel and put it in the right, or some of the right and put it in the left, and you probably wouldn't do that very often. It's not something that you would necessarily want to try to do. But if you do want to swap the right or left channel, then you can do that. And also, frequently when you record audio with a camcorder, lots of times you have one mic attached to a camcorder when it's a two-channel recording camcorder. So you have one channel that's empty. It comes in as a stereo signal when you bring it into a program like this sometimes. And so sometimes you might want to fill the left with whatever's in the right or fill the right with whatever's in the left. So that way you can kind of even it up. It won't be truly stereo, but you will have the same audio on both channels to kind of make it even so it comes out of the center rather than it comes out of just one speaker. But the real purpose, I think, for Channel Mixer, when I click this drop-down list, there are all these different kind of microphone setups. And people who are new to audio recording probably won't use any of these guys, these different kinds of mic recordings like ambisonic or mid-side to stereo. For example, mid-side, when you record a two-channel recording, or at least it simulates a two-channel recording, you use two distinctly different kinds of mics. If you typically record two channels, you want two matched mics. But mid-side uses two different mics and then records one out of phase and so then when you bring it into Audition, you tell it this is mid-side, and it splits that out-of-phase one back into phase and then splits it off into a stereo signal. So it's a unique way to record audio and has some advantages, but not likely anybody new to audio recording would use the mid-side approach or the ambisonic approach or any of these other guys here. But this is really, I think, the main reason you want the channel mixer is if you have certain microphone setups that you need to then convert to use well inside Audition. So I'm going to close this guy down. Let's take a look at the hard limiter. The hard limiter is typically used when you're trying to really drop the volume level on something that's rising above a certain level. And you typically do this with surprising with an input boost. You actually increase the volume and then you limit it. And the two things together create this kind of, I don't know, pop music, really full bore sound without actually clipping the audio, without making the audio too loud. It's typically something that's used in pop music. So let me just give you a sense of what that's like. I'll switch over to what they call, a, well, I'll go medium, so I don't really go nuts here. But you see what it does? It actually boosts the input and then make sure the amplitude 
doesn't get above negative 2 dB. In other words, negative 2 decibels below the full-scale decibel level. So it limits it. It won't let it go too loud, but it does kind of push things up a bit when you play it. So let me just play the sky right now. And I'll turn it off and on. It's off there. And back on. And you get a sense of how it kind of is pushing the sound toward you. And so a hard limiter typically is used toward the end of the process when you're finally mixed everything together. You really want to just really give it that sort of wall of sound that's popular in a lot of music these days. So hard limiter can be a valuable tool. You can also use the dynamics processing effect for that or the multiband compressor, but this guy you know, gives it to you sort of in one little package. That little input boost is a real important part of this process. Let me go over now to the spoken word side, the monaural spoken word side of things, and talk about two more effects here that work or are intended to work with a spoken word or with a vocalist. Starting with the de-esser. De-esser is intended to remove what's called sibilance, that kind of S sound that people sometimes make. It just happens sometimes with proximity to microphones, things like that. And it thinks, basically, it determines that this is sort of the sibilance range, the high frequency range, and then it looks for sibilance in that range and can remove it if you want. So you can test it by listening for sibilance to see what it's going to remove. So I'll go here and see if you can hear any sibilance here. You can probably barely hear that, but the reason you can barely hear it is because there isn't sibilance there. But if there was, it would play it for you. You hear a little tss, 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 like that as it goes along, and that's what it's going to remove. And if there isn't much sibilance, then you really won't notice this effect kicking in. But if there's a fair amount of it, this is your fallback. This is the way that you can get sibilance out of your vocals. Then here's something called the speech volume leveler, and I'm here to say I don't really see that this is of any value at all. It just doesn't seem to work. The purpose is to help level out a dialogue plus remove background sound. But to me, it makes the dialogue kind of waver. It sort of responds to dips in the dialogue by overreacting to it. And then when it gets to quiet passages, it actually kind of boosts them for a moment. So it's kind of awkward. So when you get to the quiet passage there, just listen to it for a second. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. So here it kind of goes, and it gets in that little part there. And the volume on my voice kind of goes up and down. So I haven't really found that this works as advertised. I'm not so sure that it really does help level off dialogues and remove background noises. So maybe this is a work in progress. Okay, let's talk about the last effect that I want to talk about. That's the normalize effect. That's a process effect that has to be applied to the entire clip. I'll go over here to effects and amplitude and compression. There's normalize. What normalize does is it takes whatever volume level you've got and it raises it or lowers it to a level that you specify. So if you say, I want to raise everything to 100% or 0 dBFS, then it'll take whatever volume level you've got here and knock the absolute peak level, whatever you see as the top of the peaks here, will push them to 100%. And we'll take the quietest passages and raise them an equal amount. So it doesn't spread out the audio so much as it just raises everything like a rising tide. And this is typically done when you're making a CD and you've got you know a whole bunch of different tracks and you want them to all have the same volume level as peak volume level throughout. But it's not as effective as using the dynamics processor or the multiband compressor because it lifts the whole thing rather than spreading it out or adjusting both ends independently. But I'll just show you what it looks like when I apply it. Here's the highest peak right there. If I say go to 0 dBFS or 100%, it's going to take that peak and it's going to knock it right up to the top there, and everybody else is going to rise along with it. See how that goes? It just touches the line there. So it takes the highest thing and raises it to 100%, and everything else falls into place. So if you have one just moment of audio that's just a little bit higher than everything else, that will limit how much you can raise it when you use the normalize effect. So that is just a rundown on those six other effects inside this amplitude and compression group. I'm going to talk about the two envelope effects in the next tutorial.